Oh, that was loud. Hey, hey. Hey there, folks. Peter here with BlackRock Business, and today we're going to talk about inventory preferences. This is on our continuing series about preferences and settings, and this one's pretty good. There's just a few settings in there. Before we jump into it, I'm going to tell you to click on the link below and get over to our Insiders Facebook QuickBooks Point of Sale group. Oh my gosh, that was a tongue twister. Uh, that's right, Facebook group where you can ask questions or bring up errors or training or whatnot that you want to learn about. And people such as myself and other QuickBooks Point of Sale users will answer your questions. It's a great little community. Don't forget to subscribe if you're on YouTube because then you can get all the new great videos that we're putting out constantly. Let's get into it. All right, on the file menu, you are going to go to Preferences and Company. And then over on the left-hand column, we are going down to Inventory. There's just three settings on the first page here for inventory, the first one being inventory item pictures. This is a great feature. I don't know why we have to turn it on or off. Uh, I believe you actually have to turn it on when you first get point of sale. It's not on by default for some reason. Maybe it was added later and so they made it a setting. Anyway, this setting allows you to add pictures to each one of your items. Uh, makes for makes an excellent case for um, being able to identify your items if you have certain items that are similar but you want to make sure your employees understand which ones which when they're ringing them up on the on the receipt page the make a sale screen it actually shows you each picture as you're ringing it up so you can like clearly identify okay yeah that's the thing in my hand that I just scanned or the thing that I looked up on the bar at the top so very easily you can see with the pictures what you are ringing up or if you're looking through your item list you can actually see the picture right away in the details pane on the right hand side pretty great feature uh, i don't see a whole lot of people that use it just because it's tedious but maybe you have employees who are sitting around twiddling their thumbs all day and you want to give them something to do it'd be great to have them add pictures to all of your uh, items at least the important ones okay the next setting here item number sequencing uh, this might sound confusing at first when you read it what it says is reset automatic item number sequencing when an item number is edited so what that means is if I turn this on and I'm creating a new item or editing an old item if I want to uh, let's say I you you have 3,000 items on your inventory list if you want to you can start a higher number of item number now now remember the item number is the number that comes out on the barcode on your zebra tag so let's say I'm making a new item and I decide for some reason I want my item numbers to start uh, going at 8,000 instead of down in the 3,000s where they currently are I just need to replace the item number with 8,000 and then starting from there if this setting is on uh, every item I create after that will start will go 8,001, 8,002, 8,003 etc. So if you really wanted to if you wanted certain uh, vendors or certain groups of items to be in a different number area on your item list I guess you could do that by uh, constantly changing and resetting what number your new items are starting with if you really wanted to get really organized with what item numbers your different types of products use you could do this uh, I usually don't see anybody do it but it is possible now the third setting here for reorder reminders if you didn't know it uh, there is a selection on the inventory menu for suggested POs and inventory reminders and that is uh, in correspondence with your reorder point uh, on your item if you set a reorder point of three and you get down to quantities of two on that item then it will suggest that you create a PO and it's this big system intended to make it so you just pull up that dashboard once a week and order everything you need and it's great so anyway 
back to the setting this wants to know whether your reorder reminders are based on available quantity or on hand quantity available quantity is by default and I think that you should leave it there because if you change it to on hand quantity that will also include the quantities that are already promised to layaways work orders customer orders sales orders all of those things I don't think you want to include those numbers uh, in the calculation so you only want to calculate the reminders based on available quantity which would be like if you have 10 but five of them are already on customer orders then really you only have five available so available quantity is what you should base it upon right all right we're gonna go into the subsection here for unit of measure I will probably do one or two or three videos in the future on units of measure because it's so powerful and it's so great to use in certain situations it makes so much sense so a unit of measure real quick is like if you order a case from your vendor and 12 products come in that case well on your PO you want to order one case because that's the price you're paying for one case from your vendor but when it arrives you want to sell all 12 of them separately so in the units of measure real quick we would add case as a unit of measure and we would add each as a unit of measure and uh, we would say yes we want to turn on multiple units of measure and e entering the units of measure here gives you the ability to use them and, and specify what they are when you're creating an item and of course you have to turn the setting on so that the ability is available to you. Also, I don't know why anybody would turn this off, but this this tells you which unit of measure uh, on the different documents, whether it's the receipt or the PO or the receiving voucher, <clears throat> this tells you what unit of measure you're dealing with. So that's real quick on unit of measure. We'll get into that more deeply on, on a video that's all about it. But this is the place where you can set up some of these. And you can set up all sorts of units of measure, like um, uh, <laughs> pounds and ounces and cases and pallets and you know whatever shipping container I don't know you can name it whatever you want really it could be um, a jar of, of suckers or something like that and there's 80 suckers in one jar you could do jar in each you know all sorts of different units to measure and you can use them all at the same time um, and interchange them. So we'll get into that more later. Uh, now displaying unit of measure. Always display unit of measure on the column, on the documents, and lists. Yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't because uh, what the other the alternative here is to let you <clears throat> to let you manually add a unit of measure to the column. Um, I think if you didn't add it or you forgot to add it it'd be really confusing because you wouldn't know which unit you're working with so why not just always display it seems pretty obvious so those are all of your inventory preferences and settings in uh, QuickBooks point of sale here and I'm glad that you now understand them if you have any questions go ahead and comment down below my name's Peter with BlackRock Business you have yourself a great day bye bye